If you were to die tonight, what would you want written on your tombstone? Think about it during the opener on this episode of Inverse. Hey, welcome to Inverse. Did you guys actually think about it during the opener when, the, when those, you know, the graphics are happening and you were thinking about it? What, what, what I want on my tombstone if I were to die tonight? On this episode of Inverse, we're looking at Acts chapter, chapter 9, chapter nine, 10, yep. chapter 9. And we're looking at particular characters in the early church that manifested God's mercy and justice to the community and to the church. So we're going to have a word of prayer well, done by Jonathan. We'll read a Bible verse and get to it. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will please illuminate our minds, give us an understanding of your word as we try to know and know you better and to understand uh, what you want us to understand today. And we just ask that you'll please send us your, your spirit as we go into this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Sebastian, let's go to Acts chapter 9 and verse 36, please. Onward to about 40-something. <laughs> okay. 36. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lydda was near Joppa and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room, and all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. So it was that he stayed many days in Joppa with Simon, a tanner. All right, so this is the early church. In our last episode, we looked at the principles of the kingdom that Jesus instituted for the kingdom of heaven. And now we have the early church playing out and living out those principles, mm -hmm. one character being, being Dorcas. So, so Callie, what's going on here in this passage? So we have another miracle done by mm -hmm. Peter, well, Jesus through Peter. And it's not just Peter sees someone who's passed away and so then he heals her, but we get like the whole backstory mm -hmm. of kind of what, what her life was like. And Dorcas was a woman who blessed so many people through very practical means. Mm -hmm. And she took care of them. And even people, when they wanted to tell Peter how much you know they meant her, they, they showed her like, this is what she gave us. This is what she did to us, did mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And and then you know Peter ends up healing her. And what sticks out to me is, you know, kind of like you were asking earlier, like this was what was written on her tombstone, mm -hmm. even though she was dead temporarily uh, by God's grace. But like, that's what they remembered. So like, we want her back. So can you please bring her back to us? Mm -hmm. Because she mm -hmm. is such an important part. And and, you know, everyone has their value in different things. But it's not just like, oh, we, we miss her. But it's like, look what she did for us. Like, we need her mm -hmm. blessings back mm -hmm. in our life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine, like, if she actually had a tombstone and there was something written on it? Like, <laughs> she's one of the few people that died and was resurrected and, yeah. like, this is what you guys think of me, like, mm. uh, or, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of a surreal experience yes. from, yeah. from her perspective. Maybe just a subjective, dumb question to start off the episode. Mm -hmm. What would you want on your tombstone? Hmm. Hmm. Jonathan, you said, hmm. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you want to start with me. I haven't thought about it yet. You know, but <laughs> I didn't, use, I didn't use the opener. Use the He's time. young. Yeah. He thinks he will never die. You right, know, right. So. Why, so why don't you go ahead, wise man? Wise <laughs> yeah, older man. man. <laughs> old I'm old age positive, okay? You're so, old, so old, but go ahead. <laughs> I think when I, when I think about my tombstone, I have this uh, practice that I do at home where I record videos for close friends and loved ones and family mm -hmm. in case I ever died in a surprise situation mm -hmm. so that I could let them know exactly how I felt and you know if there was any so issues. you have a whatever. video tombstone? Absolutely mm -hmm. and to me it's it's um my my ultimate aim would be that when I died that you know people always believed 
that I loved them and I treated them, you know, with the utmost of value, no matter what, who it was or where we met or how we went about. But do you erase the previous video when you come back from a trip and <laughs> yeah. you're alive? No, I save them all in a folder. So you have like years worth of Tombstone videos? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so I actually have one for you, Justin. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll never... Yeah, don't, don't Anyways, ask to watch Kelly, that. Kelly, what, what would you... I don't know <laughs> how to... It's kind of awkward, like, I want to see it. I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, I, I resonate with that, too. Something else I think about, maybe it's just the teacher in me, but um, in addition to what Sebastian said, I want people to remember me as someone who encouraged them to reach their full potential in Christ mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. helped them and enabled them to do far more than they thought they could. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that a lot, you know, in, in teaching, of just, like, you thought you couldn't do it, and you did, by God's grace, and just having someone to encourage you and to push you along the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I like that as well. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, Justin? Yeah. I asked the questions around. <laughs> sorry, here. sorry. Uh, <laughs> the rules. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. I don't know who thought of it. It makes me, makes me think, <laughs> wow. uh, I guess this sounds cliche, but faithful and true is yeah. what comes to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the, not that because I was faithful and true, but mm -hmm. those are the words that I yearn for mm -hmm. that from, from Jesus. From Jesus yeah. And mm -hmm. that what, just to hear those words from Jesus well is done. what kind of life I would have wanted to have 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 live have done live have, have lived, lived. lived. Have yes lived. you're right and yeah. grammatically awkward mm -hmm. maybe yeah. it's another <laughs> Jesus will rewrite it it's okay yeah. he'll fix it absolutely Jonathan yeah. you thought well, about it? I mean I agree with all of these I think uh, similar to you I want I want people to see Jesus in me mm -hmm. I want them to know that I live for Jesus and uh, if that can be seen I like what it actually says here in the verse about Dorcas yeah in verse 36 it says at Joppa there was yeah. a certain disciple named Tabitha. So she, she's not just a little girl or a lady or something. It's a disciple. This is a mm -hmm. follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So come back to my tombstone. I think if it says, you know, Jonathan is, was a true follower of Jesus, uh, known for his good deeds, as it says here, charitable deeds. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would praise the Lord if that if that was the case. Yeah. Now, which is interesting, our, our answers were more characteristics uh, mm -hmm. att attributes of our character. Mm -hmm. In terms of Dorcas here, this was not really in terms of her character mm -hmm. or who she was, but what she did. Yeah. True. And so that's a little bit of a, a different angle uh, yes. on, on how, and not, not wrong or bad, but no. just, right. just different. Kelly. I was going to say, in a sense, it's the same just because in order to show our characters, we have to do certain things. Yes. Whether it's producing things like they can hold and say, look what she made, mm -hmm. or this is what this person did for me. And I think, you know, our, our characteristics can be shown different ways, like I said, in teaching or with our families or whatever it may be. And so, and also, I, you know, I don't, it's kind of, it's, it is speculation, but I don't think Dorcas was thinking, like, this is how people are going to react. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. because it's a life of disinterested service, so you don't think, like, yeah, when I die, man, people are going to suffer. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, mm -hmm. it's just, I'm serving because that mm -hmm. I'm a disciple of Jesus, mm -hmm. and that's just the outgrowth of, of who I am and what I do. And a lot of times, the people who serve the most faithfully are the most surprised by how much of a difference they've made. Because mm -hmm. they're like, I'm just listening to Jesus. I'm not trying to meet a checklist or a quota, I'm just obeying God. Right. And what a, what a powerful uh, notion that really then Justin's point rings true, that if I'm faithful to living a life of mercy and justice, mm -hmm. I would be surprised yeah. by what people will be saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, your, your only goal was to continue Jesus's mission, right, from Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19. It's like, you know, the Spirit of God is upon me and anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, et cetera, et cetera. And Dorcas was just continuing what mm -hmm. Jesus' mission was, though he mm -hmm. was not there. And in the end, by living that particular life, mm -hmm. this is what the results are going to be. And, and to be truthful, the pause of probably what's going to be written on our tombstone is <laughs> awkward because in reality, like you said, we're just trying to be faithful mm -hmm. to what we know. But in the end, we have no concept mm -hmm. of how our lives have impacted people until they come back and say, hey, you know what? This is, this mm -hmm. is what this little act that you did. They mm -hmm. came with the garments. Mm -hmm. You don't know what people are going to come to us with mm -hmm. and say, you know, there was a time when I needed this or you paid for my bus fare or just this email. And it's like, you know, this was the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that's, that's a profound idea to reflect upon. Yeah, I find it's, uh, it's interesting when you look at just world history and whenever people die that have maybe made a huge impact and... Uh, maybe no one ever really told them while they were alive, but when they die, uh, suddenly everyone comes out with all these stories. And like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, this is how this, ma this person made a difference in my life, and this person yeah. made a difference in my life. <clears throat> the other thing is that um, a, when it comes down to it, um, what matters 
uh, yes, our theology matters, our, our understanding of the truth and so on, but people will remember what you did. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, people, people rarely th say, oh, you know, his theology was sound and he had all these <laughs> points right. But they will remember, as you said, when you paid for that bus fare, when you did something yeah. good, you know, and when you go to funerals, uh, you know, you hear all these stories and it's never about, oh, he had really such a logical understanding of the truth. It was, this person was so lovable and, and good. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this person showed me Jesus, yeah. you know. Yeah. In, in our culture, contemporary culture, maybe it's not a tombstone, but maybe we, we, it's very sadly, we see this happening in, in social media accounts. Mm -hmm. Should mm -hmm. someone have passed away, mm -hmm. people leave behind stories, leave mm -hmm. behind whatnot. And the question is, it's not more about friendship and relationships in, 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 in this text, mm -hmm. but more the effects of their life. Yeah. In our generation, it's all about bucket lists and what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, what kind mm -hmm. of, where, where you've been and what photos you've had. Mm -hmm. But the Bible is focusing in, not in a legalistic way, but the effects of mm -hmm. your life. What actions have you, as, as Jonathan mentioned. Yeah. So the question is, you know, maybe there's someone else out watching there and they're like, hey, this is great, you guys. And I know what, I know how I want my social media account to look like when I die. I know what <laughs> I want my tombstone to say, but they are like, but what do I do in the meantime? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to start crocheting here. This, that, this is not me. Or maybe someone is going to start crocheting as a result. Why not? And, and real men crochet. Yeah. yeah. So what? What, what is? Uh, Justin, what? You what, crochet? I'm just saying there are men out there who crochet that we shouldn't make fun of. Korean okay, men? Sebastian. I agree. Both of you so what? What, <laughs> what are practical things we can say? Like because this is a great story, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. we can preach on it like we've been doing, but. What are, practically speaking, mm. what, do, what do we do? Like to make a difference? What do we make, how do we make a difference? I Pr mean, it... Practically. <laughs> practically. Practically. Okay, well, like, I'm look gonna... to the camera and say, we need to start crocheting for G. Is that what the Bible I don't think I'm supposed to look at the camera. Saying? I think okay, only you're right, supposed right, to right. do that. So I just want to <laughs> obey, you know, obey people. But... Speak. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that comes to my mind is, I mean, just the general principle yes. of this idea that we can't do all the things, but we can do something. And God puts us in different places. So, you know, we're all, I, I'm a teacher, you do something. You're something else, and you work at the GC. And so we all work in different places and do different things, and so we don't serve God in all the same way. Like, our lives aren't going to look like Dorcas's. But I'm sure what it sounds like is Dorcas saw a need. This person needs something to wear. Hmm. I know how to make something. I'm going to make hmm. something, and I'm going to give it to them. Now, that's a powerful principle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if she was an originally a, a uh, whatever, whatever she was, but she's, <laughs> She's meeting needs around her. Yeah. So faithfulness is meeting the needs around you that are most immediate, immediate, immediate. immediately around yeah. you yeah. and meeting those needs. And from there, God reveals his will. Uh, when we come back after the break, we're going to look at really practical ways to identify how do I meet the needs of those around me. So stay with us. Hey, welcome back. We're looking at principles not only for the immediate how to know, how to meet people's needs, but also in the larger picture, how to know God's will. And in many ways, we can't really um, map out, this is God's will for me, this is where I am, and this is the shortest route to that. Right. It's more about God reveals his will at intermediate stages and, and slow amounts. And then when we look back, we can see, wow, God has really revealed mm -hmm. his right. will to me. But for the pra for practical purposes, for the, for the young mm -hmm. and for the young at heart out there who want to know, but how do I, what do I got to do? How do mm -hmm. I know? Kelly. First thing is just to keep your eyes and your ears open to the needs of others in a very practical way. So I work at a school and I'll hear my colleagues saying, oh, I have no time to do something. Mm. And I know I have more free pairs than they do. So I've gone to them and said, hey, do you mean to watch your kids at recess so you can prep? Like, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks so much. And uh, that's small. I'm not like changing the whole world with that, but I am, you know, the starfish story. <laughs> I am helping them and I'm encouraging <laughs> that's from, uh, them. <laughs> another episode, the previous episode. There was the battle of the starfish stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I have some students who will say, yeah, this assignment's way too hard. I can't do it. So then, okay, yeah. how can I help you? Do you want to meet after class and I can tutor you and how you use grammar mm -hmm. properly? Da, da, da. So just, but I can be like, okay, that's sorry, I have a need. And I'm like, Jesus, please show me a greater need. Mm. <laughs> but just whatever it is, and I might not know how to reach it. Sometimes another colleague needed a flight somewhere and I, I can't pay for a flight because I don't have a lot of money, but I do know how to find more affordable flights. And so I looked that up for her because she didn't know how to do that. And mm -hmm. so just anything when you, when you hear someone, because someone might not say, hey, Justin, can you please help me with this? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Sometimes it comes in the form of complaining or of just mm. someone expressing stress. And mm -hmm. you think to yourself and you pray, Jesus, is there anything I can do for this person at all? So mm -hmm. proactively going outside of yourself, yeah. looking for opportunities to help. Yeah. And, and, it, and maybe after time, they'll become a habit. And yeah. then opportunities may come because of that faithfulness mm -hmm. to yeah. those small things. And one other thing I want to mention, just because I found this to be unconventional, I'm a very uh, organized person and mm. like planning. And so sometimes I want to help a lot of people, but I'm just like, if I say yes or I offer too many things, then I just get stressed. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, I have this, I'm going to focus on one of my colleagues a week. And I have it like in my bullet journal. I write mm. like who I'm focusing on. Mm. And so I focus on that colleague throughout the entire week and notice anything I can do for them. Mm -hmm. And that sounds a little structured, but it, it just helps me be really intentional and not to yeah. be like, if it's That's obvious, awesome. it's not. But no, like, just because you plan it, it doesn't take away from its authenticity yeah, at all. It's it. more intentional. <laughs> and, they, and yeah, they kind of like, sometimes I'm like, hey, like one of my colleagues, Rachel, I'm like, Rachel, this week is Rachel week. How can I help you? She's like, you're so weird, but you can do this. <laughs> I'm like, thanks. Yeah. So it helps. Okay. Yeah. It All works. right. All right. Um, Sebastian. It, what Callie to me is, is really addressing on an even more basic level is you just have to be around people. Mm -hmm. And if you're around yes. people, you're going to find needs. That's true. You mm -hmm. know, if I go to the, the airport, if I go to the bus station, if I go to the grocery store, if mm -hmm. I'm in the parking lot, if I'm just taking out my trash and see my neighbor, a lot of times um, one of my favorite preachers says, that we all want to be a missionary where we're not. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm going to go all the way to Cambodia and I'm going to serve because I saw this thing on social mm -hmm. media or on the web or advertised at my church. But in reality, if we don't know the neighbors, we don't know the people at the grocery store, we don't know the people where we go to get our car washed, whatever, you will always find needs as long as you find people. Uh, but is there a place for introverts, Sebastian? Because I know you're a high extrovert <laughs> with a capital E. I'm definitely not but, an extrovert. But, but what about the introverts or maybe those who are on social media 24-7, who are, are those young people who are the millennials who are Netflix and chilling and they're, they're binge watching <laughs> Inverse from seasons one through five, one through six, whatever season we're on now. Uh -huh. Like, w is there a place for them or do they just need to like get out of the house and see sunshine and get a tan and talk to people i think i think you know there is a <laughs> there is a know? place for service on social media platforms okay I agree. okay there there's definitely an opportunity there to speak to people who may not be physically near you okay right? not in your community mm -hmm. at the same token there is also value in what you said get outside out of your comfort zone because the truth of the matter is you can't confuse your comfort with your safety. You may feel safe in this place. Mm -hmm. And for myself as an introvert, I oftentimes have to be pushed. If I was not a preacher, it would be very unlikely for me to find myself in certain positions of ministry. Mm -hmm. But because I'm invited, because I am accepting this role mm -hmm. and this call, I am pressed to go and be, in a, be around and mingle with people when my mm -hmm. preference is not to do that. Mm -hmm. I would love to read yeah. and study and you know, just hang with people who are very close to me already. Just going back to the text, I find a balance here in, in Dorcas, and maybe it is an imposition uh, in my, maybe, I should, I should, maybe I'm reading into the text here, <laughs> but I feel like that Dorcas would, may have been more of an introvert, mm -hmm. but she focused on these, these things that she could do yeah. for the purpose of ministering to people. Yes, and then so I guess there's a there's a fear out there. Yeah. Some people say, "Wow, well, I gotta min I gotta talk to." people i'm not a people person i hate mm. people people talk back what do i say yeah. and but there is a ministry for people who yeah. like that kind of thing mm -hmm. right yes. sebastian yes. but there's also a ministry <laughs> for people who don't and they can use things and and not for things for things sake but things yeah. meeting the needs of people so the people yeah. being the end goal i think is where we're trying to yeah. get to. So we'll go to jonathan back to Kat. i think it's it's really depends <laughs> on the individual every yeah. one of us is in a different place yes. and so as we trust god as we surrender our lives to him Every morning, you know, I, I expect God mm -hmm. to be directing my life that day in a way that he will give me opportunities to minister in whatever way that is mm -hmm. on social media or crocheting mm -hmm. or helping somebody change that tire, you mm -hmm. know. But what we need to learn is to be willing to let God interrupt our agenda. So, you know, oh, I, I love that. I got to you say that one time. Uh, being willing to let God interrupt your agenda. Interrupt your Because agenda. we have our plans or maybe we don't have plans, but that's also a plan. Yes. Um, and naturally, we are more self-focused. I want to get all this stuff done, mm -hmm. you know, and every phone call is an interruption of my agenda, someone else's agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to be wise in how we deal with that. But we need to be open 
to the fact that God sometimes will say, hey, I have a little bit of a different plan for you today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and being willing to say, okay, I can put this project on the back burner because this person really needs my help right now. And I've noticed many times when I say, God, give me those divine appointments, He will, he will give them to me. I'm, mm -hmm. I would say 90% of the time, I will see a person or a situation where I know oh, this, is, this is what God wanted mm -hmm. me to do now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and who you allow mm -hmm. to interrupt your agenda mm -hmm. is often defining who your who you who your beloved ones are mm -hmm. or yeah. who your god is yes. in a sense so yeah. yeah i love that i love that kelly yeah i also think you know and just interacting i was having a conversation with a very extroverted close friend of mine yesterday and was that I, sebastian? no, no. Was okay. sebastian, different person. <laughs> right. uh, her name's sylvia okay. and so <laughs> we were we were talking and i'm in charge of this evangelistic program at at church and it huh. is stressing me out because it requires me to talk to so many different people mm. and so i called sylvia to be like hey can you like take over for me because i'm gonna die and and she's like, I can, but I don't think taking, I don't think that's what you really need. What you need is to play to your strengths and I can go talk to people and you just figure out all the details and planning because you're really good at that and I'm not. Yeah. And so we're able to come together and play to our strengths. Mm. And so I do think there's a place to go outside our comfort zone. And there's other times just to collaborate. Mm -hmm. She is phenomenal at talking to anyone mm -hmm. and I'm phenomenal at details. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to come together and do ministry together. I love that word collaborate because mm -hmm. that is a foundational principle of the early church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. where they're collaborating with each mm -hmm. other, parts extroverts, right. introverts, organized, messy people, all coming together <laughs> through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> kind of like inverse. Kind of right? like inverse, yeah. yeah. He's the We're still one. figuring out where Sebastian fits in all this. <laughs> but but he, 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 he add one. love him nonetheless. Just add one little thing here. Yes, sir. Um, I think... Uh, uh, no, no. I, I think, right? We were all about think? thinking, yes. You're allowed to think. I'm allowed to think, too? Great. What I would say here is the collaboration is great, and I think everyone's needs are different and sometimes somebody wants help with something mm -hmm. um, but we need to listen to the Holy Spirit guiding us in maybe as your friend said you don't you don't need her to take over you yeah. need collaboration mm -hmm. yeah, so just because help. someone says you know I need this and this that doesn't mean you have to do this and that That's true. Right. there might be a better way it. so yeah. uh, otherwise we, we, we could you know get burned out just trying to fulfill all these sure. needs mm -hmm. and often some people ask for help just because they're lazy or selfish yeah and so when, if we really want to help them there might be a better way for them mm -hmm. so no, it, no, it's, thank you for that, you know, that caveat that's, that's, very a, that's, true. A, that's a very important disclaimer mm -hmm. and especially with the, the the collaboration is a buzzword for for <laughs> for for a lot of circles mm -hmm. yes. but we want to see synchronization and coordination mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit yeah. so we appreciate yeah. that let's go let's jump to James chapter 2 Yay. where we see see more principles on how the early church functioned. And this is where we're seeing Jesus' kingdom being played out in real life. And today's churches, maybe not so much uh, 100%, but we're all endeavoring in that journey. So James chapter 2, verse mm -hmm. 1. Mm. And Sebastian, can you read verses 1 through 4, please? My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. Mm -hmm. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes. And you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place and say to the poor man, you sit there or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Mm. Why do mm. we prefer the bling more than <laughs> the, the nothing? Huh? What? Nothing. I'm, I'm trying, yeah. I'm I trying think to rhyme here. Thank you. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely uh, a human nature thing. Yeah. Uh, by human nature, we want beautiful things. We want things that are nice, things that benefit us. Uh, and so um, if the rich person shows up, um, we, we want to give them a special treatment because we might benefit from them, if not financially, then just by being associated with them. Mm -hmm. So it's just an, a human nature thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't mean that we shouldn't pay attention to rich, but we should not show partiality. Mm -hmm. Kelly? I love how he just blasts their logic, though, because he keeps going. And so he's, in verse 5, he says, do you not know that the poor can also be rich in faith? And in verse 6, you have dishonored them. Verse 7, so mm. talking about the people you're honoring, do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? Mm -hmm. So, like, the people that you're honoring are dishonoring God. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, why? It's not even like they're nice and they're rich, you like them. But, like, they're mean, they're just rich. That's mm -hmm. it. And, you know, to Jonathan's point, it just shows that we are, we're so prone to falling for the world's standards mm -hmm. of, of anything that should be glorified, whether it's celebrities or rich or how people look. And we forget that the externals are only that. They're yeah. the externals. How can the church not do this? 
how can the how can we build into the church? Okay, as church as individuals, but also as young adults become leaders of churches, mm -hmm. or they already may be in leadership. How can we prevent the church getting into James two, or even becoming not like Dorcas and uh, 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 not becoming like the early church? I think service is a great uh, way to do that. If we are, if the, we have an active church, an active mm -hmm. community that that deals with pe people from all walks of life, mm -hmm. uh, whether mm -hmm. rich or poor. I mean, usually when you when you do an outreach ministry, um, helping people is usually more the poor people, mm -hmm. and that's not nothing wrong with that. Um, I think when we when we are engaged in that, we are more aware of people's real situations, yeah. and you are you, you know you realize. You know what really matters mm -hmm. is 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 helping people, and uh, uh, the the wealthy might have other needs. It might not yeah. be financial, or they don't need crocheted clothes. You know, <laughs> but they need maybe uh, you know psychological, or or they, maybe just they want friendships because yeah. they feel yeah. isolated. So, um, but service, just in being engaged in service, and not just being encapsulated in your own little church community yeah. and never reaching out. Uh, you are you are missing out on, on great opportunities there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kelly, the the biggest thing that comes to my mind isn't so much to answer the grand narrative of your question, but to answer the personal application, mm. and that is to I think you've said it in a sermon before is to burn your eyes on Jesus. Mm. <laughs> and I notice the more I fill my mind with Scripture and Jesus' example, the more I see people as they really are mm -hmm. and fall for the world standards less and less. Mm -hmm. That's my prayer, and that's the prayer for for our panelists. Yes, to live the life of uh, intentional Christianity, the way that Jesus wanted his church to live out, especially in these last days. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see, we'll see you next week here on Inverse.